Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today we are talking about my trial of fire, how I conquered extroverted sensing and what you can do as an INFJ or INTJ in order to cope better with reality. And I'm going to show you what happens on the other side once you're done dealing with extroverted sensing. What happens when you manage to make peace with external reality. As an INFJ or INTJ, you might often find yourself feeling frenzied, overwhelmed and burnt out by everything that's happening around you. The external world is busy, chaotic and stressful. It is intense to be alive. To be alive is an intense feeling. It is a feeling that is going to hit you many times. The sensory aspects of the world are tough to deal with. It's overwhelming, stressful, it's often going to cause you to feel rushed. You're gonna feel like you have to be on, you're gonna feel pressure to be on, to be active, to be engaged, to be out in the world, to put yourself out there. You're gonna feel like you're not doing it enough, you're gonna feel like you're lost and that you should be out more, and that you can't find the energy or strength to do so. And you're gonna feel like you often tunnel vision, you get focused, you get snowed in and you lose track of everything that needs to be done around you. So as an INFJ or INTJ, what can you do to manage extroverted sensing? What I've found is often the only way out is true. That's the most difficult aspect, the most difficult realization when it comes to extroverted sensing. The only way out is true. You're going to have to have a trial by fire. You're going to have to put yourself out there. You're going to have to face the world many times over and over to prove to yourself that you are capable of dealing with it and living there and being there. Yeah, ultimately, while you might feel highly nervous to put out your work or to realize your ideals or to go out on stage and talk about something you're passionate about or something you've been thinking about for a long time, you have to do it and you have to learn to manage your nerves and to do so consistently. What I'm seeing is a lot of INFJs are able to do it. They're able to be outgoing, but often they're very inconsistent about it. They do it and then they fade away and then they run and hide into a cave for years and then they come back and try again. Often INFJs go out, put out their work and then remove it. They write something and then they delete it. They put out a video and then they remove their channel. What I'm seeing is INFJs and INTJs, they constantly find themselves wanting to be out in the world, but also finding it stressful and difficult to deal with the fact that they are out in the world. And because it's stressful, they put it back. They take it back. They close the door. They remove it. They avoid it. They don't want to face it. They don't want to deal with it. So. How can you manage those fears? What can you do when you're starting to doubt yourself or you're starting to feel like you're stupid or it's not good enough or uh, that it's too overwhelming or too intense? A real example, a very real example is when you need to start going out dating and having relationships. Yeah, it's not possible to hide from a partner. It's not healthy, it's not constructive. It's not going to get you closer to people. And you're going to have to learn to be present and to be attentive to your partner. You're going to have to learn to be consistently present and attentive to your partner. That means you can't shut them out for long. You can't keep them away. You can't run away. You can't escape. You can't, whenever it goes difficult or whenever there's conflict or whenever there's problems, you can't just fade out or dissociate or detach from the situation. You're going to have to learn to face it head on. So once again, you're gonna need to have a trial by fire. Now, why do I call it a trial by fire? I call it this because of how it's felt. Yeah, it's not comfortable, it's not nice, it's not healthy to be in this kind of a state for too long. Extorted sensing is stressful, taxing, draining. That means when you go into extroverted sensing, you're gonna feel like your energy is fading and it's fading fast and you're gonna feel like you're hitting the limit. And you're gonna feel like it's pushing too far and that it's too much and it's too draining and too stressful and you're gonna want to put the stop button. And here's the thing, you wanna learn to do it the right way. 
The first thing you want to do is you want to develop a fireproof suit. And what is that fireproof suit? Well, it is, of course, energy. It is motivation. It is passion. The first thing you want to do is develop a strong hobby or a passion or a cause that you are very devoted to, something that you care about very deeply. You want to go into introverted intuition and you want to master it fully because when you master introverted intuition fully, when it's your home state, when you're fully comfortable inside your own mind, when you are clear in your head, it is far easier to be out in the world without doubt, without insecurity. You're going to have a resource that you can pull energy from, something you can pull motivation from. That means when you go out into the world, you do so with vision, with purpose and with clarity of mind. If you have this clarity of mind, it's a lot easier to put yourself out there and to be out there consistently because you have an infinite well of energy bottled up inside of you that you can constantly pull from whenever you need it. So if you find yourself getting drained or exhausted or losing perspective, take a quick time out. Take a step back. Step back into yourself. Breathe. Shut your eyes. And you're back. Yeah. Learning to pull from the well whenever you need the strength is very important. So find a way to do this consistently throughout the day. Find a way to close your eyes, find peaceful moments, moments of relaxation, moments of calm, and learn to set boundaries for yourself. Ask for time to go out and get some fr sorry, to get some fresh air. Ask for space or a moment so you can think about something for a few minutes, just a few minutes, or as long as you need, and then come back. Learn to communicate absence and presence. Say, I'm going to have to take an hour to myself to do some right thing, but I'll get back to you later. Or uh, say, I'm uh, currently busy with something, but I will be happy to meet up with you in a few hours. And have that communication you know learn to communicate your absence and learn to communicate your presence learn also to communicate this with yourself yeah okay i'm gonna have to go out and do something that's very difficult and annoying tomorrow but that's tomorrow and today i can focus on recharging and regaining energy and so you know it's not forever one of the most important things is just knowing it's not forever you know what the finish line is you know where you're doing it and you know how long it's going to go on for if you're a musician and you go on a tour yeah you know it's for three weeks and then after that you can rest and if you are uh, for example uh, going to go to a party you know okay i'm going to be there for a few hours and then i'm done the other thing you want to do is, when it comes to the trial by fire, it is uh, to learn that you can endure more than what you think. Yeah, when I was a kid, when I was 15, I was incredibly sheltered. True it was, I didn't have a lot of friends, didn't have a lot of connections. I was very much living inside my own head. I had notebooks full of scribbles, writing, stories and philosophy. I loved philosophy. I had a whole inner world full of ideas and theories. I had things that I wanted to say, things that I wanted to put out into the world, but I didn't know how or where to begin or how to start. Now, my changing moment was when I met up with an ESFP. I met up with an ESFP and uh, you know, he had the most great, brilliant sense of humor. He was so energetic, so playful. Whenever he was out, no matter what he was doing, he was laughing, he was easygoing, he was peaceful. And you know, that really boggled me. How can he be out in the present world so happy, so cheerful, with so much energy and so much joy? What I thought was anxiety-inducing, stressful and difficult, what I felt was like, oh my god, I have to get through it and I have to push myself and it's so annoying, but I have to do it. He thought was so much fun and so engaging and so interesting. So I learned, yeah, this is how it's like for other people. Other people enjoy this. Other people find this fun. So why can't I? And... Um, so I learned, okay, what can I do to make it fun? And what I learned to do at that point was learn to engage my intuition and feeling. What I made it about was the people, the connections, the tribe. 
what I made it about was politics. I got super interested in politics and I got really interested in changing the world. And it became my new cause, my new passion. Politics was the perfect arena for me because there I could be a philosopher, thinking about and expressing ideas and coming up with new proposals. There I could be talking to and connecting with people. And because I made connections with people, because I reached people, helped people, uh, got people involved, it was worth it. I could be as outgoing as I wanted to. I could handle as much stress as I needed to in the service of my ideals and my values. I've learned that I can push myself, that I can be tough on myself, that I can be my own master, that I can drive myself wherever I need to go. I can get myself through any situation for the right reasons, for the right cause. And the same goes for relationships. If you love somebody, if you care about somebody, if they're really important to you, if you're really interested in them and if they keep remaining there as a fascination in your life, yeah, you're always going to come back to them and you're always going to want to talk to them and you're always going to have that um, need to have them around in your life. What happens when you develop the ability to use extroverted sensing? Well, first of all, developing extroverted sensing is the same as learning to put on your own safety belt. When you have extroverted sensing, when you're able to access it effectively, you're also able to protect yourself. Extroverted sensing is not there to be a force of opposition in your life. It's there to be your guardian and protector. That means it's there to help shield you from the real world. It's there to help make you alert and to stay present and to deal with important things around you. Thanks to extorted sensing, your house is not going to catch on fire. You're not going to find yourself swarmed or flooded by things you forgot to deal with. You're not going to get overwhelmed because extorted sensing is going to remind you, okay, you have to pick up this phone call or talk to this person or deal with this situation or take care of that important activity or go out and meet with those people. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise, yeah, that's what it becomes. If you don't do it, if you don't deal with it, it floods up on your desk. It becomes a stack of paper of all the things you should have done that you didn't do. And that is draining on its own. Yeah, true that is. Even if you choose not to deal with it, it's not still going to be there. That means even if uh, you're not going to go through the fire, your house is still going to be burning. <laughs> that is going to be stressful. If your house is burning and you are sitting there avoiding it and pretending it's not happening, well, your house is going to keep burning and it's only going to get hotter and it's only going to get more difficult. And while this is happening, it's going to be difficult for you to be yourself. Yeah, you can't be yourself if you can't deal with and face with your fears and anxieties in life. That means if you have fears and you let them control you, they're going to control you. <laughs> That's the logical assumption here. If you have fears and you let them control you, you're going to be controlled. That means, okay, you're not going to be able to access introverted intuition either. You're not even going to be able to use your dominant function. If you can't use your inferior function and your inferior function is stressed, you're not going to be able to use your dominant function either. So ultimately, you're not going to be able to function. Yeah, it's going to be hard to function if you're avoiding everything in life. You're going to need to learn to function. And that also means learning to deal with what's difficult, learning to face what's tough. On the plus side, when you deal with it, there is a sense of relief. Yeah, when you are out, when you put out the fire, when you dealt with it, it's done. It's gone. You'll have a clean house. You'll have a fresh, relaxing atmosphere around you. You're going to have harmony. You're going to have peace of mind. There is not going to be any disruptions. There is not going to be anything unexpected that's going to happen. You're, ha you're going to have bought yourself time. Time for yourself, time to focus on your needs, time to do what you love most. Now, what can you do? Well, one thing you want to do is minimize future disruptions. Keep the house from catching on fire in the first place. What was it that caused it to catch on fire? What was it that caused the disruption? What can I do to make sure it doesn't happen? Because you don't want to have constant disruptions. You don't want extroverted sensing to constantly be hammering on you. No. You're going to need to learn to lower the volume. 
if you can lower the volume you can also relax that means you know that there won't be any disruptions because you turned off the phone you told your friends you're going to be unavailable for a bit you communicated with your partner that you're going to need a day of space or thinking yeah if you're able to communicate absence or uh, put on the pause button or control your external reality it's not going to be as difficult to that to maintain it's going to be clean it's going to be harmonious it's going to be peaceful you're never going to be able to completely rule out disruptions they're going to be there but you can control when they happen and how beyond that Beyond that, being outside, being there, knowing that you survived your fire, you're going to notice that you have a strength, a power inside of you. Wow, you were able to deal with it. You were able to take care of things that were difficult. You're stronger than you think. You're not controlled by your anxieties or sensitivities. Your insecurities can't hold you back. You're stronger than that. You're better than that. You have more power, more energy, more passion than what you thought and you can accomplish far more than what you believed you could and that means after having finished trial by fire you have exactly what it needs what you need in order to start developing extroverted intuition yeah when you're able to get out of the fire when you're able to uh, protect yourself when you're able to find your inner strength you're also going to find the power to be more vulnerable bold courageous when you can find courage, that also means that you know that you can actively seek out the fire in the first place. Yeah, before you can start developing extrovert intuition, you have to manage extrovert sensing. Your fourth function comes before your fifth. When you're done facing the fire that has been happening around you, you can also go seek it out because you know that you have the power to put it out. Yeah, you're able to go out into the world, take risks, live more boldly. You're able to try new things, put yourself out there and uh, do things that scare you. You're not going to know what's going to happen all the time. You're not going to be able to, able to control or predict every outcome, but you're still going to be able to go out and face it knowing that you know that you have the power to deal with it if it gets stressful, if it gets tough, if it gets difficult. Through this, we don't want to live in control by our fears. We don't want our anxieties or high sensitivity to maim us or to cripple us. You don't want to feel that uh, you are the way you are because you have anxiety or because you have stress. You don't want to feel stuck. You don't want to feel uh, reality weighing down on you. You don't want to feel crippled by the world. You want to feel that you have the power to deal with whatever it lays ahead. Extroverted intuition can give you exactly what you need in order to become not just a person but a hero or something extraordinary. Yeah, when you develop extroverted intuition, that's when you really start to shine. That's when your ideas are really expressed and put into the world. Thanks to extroverted intuition, you have the power to put your ideas out there to make things happen. You're not only going to be planning for the future, but you're going to be making and taking the actions necessary to create that future. You're going to be opening up to opportunities that you previously ruled out. Yeah, instead of thinking about having that relationship, thinking about starting up that project, thinking about doing that thing you always thought about, you're going to be out and you're going to be doing it. Yeah, you're going to be connecting with people. You're going to be trying new things. You're going to be uh, opening up to things that you previously shut off from a lot of the time infjs and intjs shut off from things we disconnect we ignore things we say we need time we say we need to wait we say we need to think about it a bit longer and it's honestly discouraging because opportunities are not always there forever people are not going to wait for you forever relationships are not going to wait to happen uh, and your dreams they have an expiry date in a sense of speaking there are uh, deadlines that you need to do in order to fi finish a project or to work through something or to start on something. Now, no worries. If you miss a deadline, if you miss out on an opportunity, there are going to be new ones. There are going to be new opportunities. There are going to be new possibilities for sure. But still, 
it sucks that you missed them in the first place. It's you had something great, you had something important there, you had something you could have done that would have been really nice. And it's gonna suck to know that you missed out because you were afraid or because you were anxious or worried or because you thought you weren't strong enough to deal with it. Because a lot of time what it comes down to is this feeling that I'm not strong enough. The thing that holds us back the most, no matter what personnel type we are, is that feeling that we're not strong enough. And we need strength, we need power. We cannot just be sheep. Being kind, being generous, being docile, being tame, being peaceful, having harmony, having comfort, having relaxation, those are all good things. It's fine to have joy, flow, relaxation, peace, and recharge. True this, we need it. We need to have people around us that we can relax around. We need to have an environment we can feel good about. We need to have things in us that, yeah, are just nice and uncomplicated and simple and easy. But we're also gonna need to have tension and stress and conflict and disruptions. So we're gonna need to deal with both of these things. Yeah, you're gonna have to learn to tune into and channel your inner power and strength and to start conflicts and to seek out issues and seek out problems and put yourself in the eye of the storm. Yeah, when I was in extroverted sensing, when I was going into this most fully, I always felt like I was in the eye of the storm. I was constantly around the conflict. There was always tension and drama and issues around me that I had to deal with. and. They were always happening around me and they were always stressing me out and pushing me forward and scaring me and freaking me out. But at the same time, they were egging me on and putting me out there and teaching me lessons and learning me things. So it's both. We have to recognize both. Things that do not kill you, do make you stronger, <laughs> or if nothing else, they just make you. They just, they're just a part of you. They're just the thing that you've experienced, the thing that was there, a thing that you had to face, that you faced and got through. So, yeah. That is how you can develop extroverted sensing as an INFJ or INTJ. Tell me about your trial by fire. Tell me about that time where you faced a really difficult and intense situation. Share it down in the comments down below and thank you all so much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.